Okay, so we'll start off by taking a look at the fact that I created a CRM solution to house my little sample. What we're going to do is we're going to come straight over to Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new project here and we'll call it's going to be a .NET Framework 4.5 empty ASP.NET web application. Of course we know that this is not an ASP.NET web application, it's going to be deployed to CRM, but this is the template that we're going to use. And we'll call this CRM Visual Studio Debug Demo. Go ahead and click OK here. First thing I'm going to do here is create a scripts folder. And then I'm going to add a folder for form scripts. And then I'll just add a JavaScript file called account form.js. Right, so this is a standard scenario where I want to wire up some JavaScript to the CRM form. And I'm using folders inside of Visual Studio to just organize my scripts. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to use the web resource linker, which is a tool that I'll have a link to in my blog post. But I'm going to link and publish this web resource. And so to get this information, it's real easy. Just come over to CRM, go to your settings, select, select customizations, developer resources, get the discovery service here. So I'll copy that, paste it over here. You're also going to want to get the organization unique name. I'll paste that over here. And since this is CRM online that I'm using, I'm going to use my CRM online credentials. and let it connect. So what this tool does is it gives me a way to link files in Visual Studio to CRM. And since I haven't created these files in CRM yet, I'm just going to use a nice feature that allows you to create a new web resource in a particular solution. So I'm going to use the naming conventions from the CRM SDK that are recommended. So let's grab this. It's the name of my file. Let's go ahead and bring this over here. And because I've got this structure over here, I'm going to use the same structure over here. I'm going to do a slash scripts slash forms slash account form.js. I'm going to make this a JavaScript file. Save and close this. Go ahead and close that. Notice now that that exists in my solution. I'm going to come back over to Visual Studio here, and so I have to refresh here. And then I'm going to link to scripts, forms, account form.js. All right, so now what I can do now that I've linked from Visual Studio to CRM, I can come in here and create a function. We'll call this uh, dkdt underscore form load. And so I want to use XRM page in, in this sample. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say man, manage NuGet packages. I'm going to go online to find the XRM page IntelliSense helper. Install that. And then just get IntelliSense working. So in here, we're going to say var client URL is equal to xrm.page.context.get server URL. And I know that this uh, IntelliSense file is a little stale. There's a new API that's more predictable called get client URL. So I'm going to use that instead. And then I'm just going to set a JavaScript alert. And then I'm going to alert the client URL. Now, what I want to be able to do here is just set a breakpoint and start Internet Explorer. Well, if I do that, it's just going to try to load this in Visual Studio's local development server, which is IS Express. But we're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to do here is we're going to come over to Dynamic CRM, go to our workplace, and we're going to create a new account. Um, now, what I'm going to do is, is just I'm going to copy this whole URL. Right, for the new account form. 
and I'm going to come over to the properties of Visual Studio and select web and say start URL. We'll save all that. So I'm going to come back over to my account form. I'm going to right click and say link publish web resource. If you look at the output here, what you'll notice is that it's actually publishing just that single file to CRM. In this case, it's CRM online. All right, so it's successfully updated and published. Now I just need to wire up this script to the form. So we'll come back over to Internet Explorer here. We'll customize the form. We'll go ahead and add that new form that I just created, DKDT scripts forms account form.js. We'll wire it up to start on load. So let's select that. Let's grab the name of the function. Okay, we can save and close this. Publish the entity. Go ahead and close this tab out. So now if I come back over here to Visual Studio, we've basically written the code, we've published it, we've wired up the JavaScript to the form. Now all we want to do is start the debugger. So you can either say debug, start debugging, hit F5, or click the play button. I'm just going to hit F5 here. And what happens here is Visual Studio is going to launch Internet Explorer pointing to that URL. attaches the debugger to the Visual Studio instance and then because this file matches identical to a file that it finds loaded up in its script documents it's able to then hit our breakpoint so I can you know, do an F10 here notice that uh, there's the value so we're actually debugging right within Visual Studio and hit it for 5 and there's our message from the web page so you saw how easy it is to use the web resource linker tool in standard old Visual Studio web projects and the ability to start a specific URL and attach the debugger to take advantage of all the built-in JavaScript debugging capabilities of Visual Studio. So as a developer, let's say, okay, you're done with this script and you want to stop debugging that. Now you want to move on to maybe a custom HTML web resource that you've developed. Right? So let's come in here, say add new item. And we'll call this, uh, we'll take an HTML page, we'll call this uh, debug test. And I like to use a naming convention here where anytime I have a HTML web resource right next to it, I put its code beside JavaScript file. So I'll call this, select a JavaScript file here, call it .js. A lot of people call this unobtrusive JavaScript. But basically what we want to do now is just reference this file from there. Okay, so we'll do the same thing that we did before. We'll link and publish this. And of course, we're going to need to create a new web resource. We want it in that same solution. So we'll just call it slash debug.html. Make sure it's an HTML page. We'll save and close that. We'll refresh this. We'll grab debug test.html and link and publish it. Alright, we'll do the same thing for debug test.html.js. We'll create a new web resource again in that solution. Call this one.js as it's called in Visual Studio. Just, I like to keep them consistent. This time it'll be script. We'll save and close. Now we come back over here, refresh this. Find it. Link and publish. All right, so now we've got three web resources. Here, we've got three web resources here. I'll come in here and I'll 
add our CRM client global context reference. All right, well then add the Microsoft CDN reference for jQuery. Notice that this template uses slash slash so that it uses whatever the protocol, either HTTP or HTTPS of the site it's running within. And we'll come over here. Actually, let's grab this real quick. And we'll do a little IntelliSense reference. in here you have to do HTTP, maybe not, but I'll do it just for good measure. And now I'm using jQuery code snippets. I'll provide a link in my blog post if you're curious how to find those, but I can just do a jq doc ready short, tab over, and we can do something similar to what we did before, except this time I will call get client context through this JavaScript file. So we'll say var context is equal to get, oops, got to get my, got to get my uh, JavaScript IntelliSense reference here. So now we have get global context. And we can say, you know, same thing here, we can say uh, alert uh, context dot get client uh, get server URL. And of course, I want to use get client URL because it's more predictable. All right, similarly, I can set my breakpoint there. I can right click these two individual files and through the power of the web resource linker, just publish those two things. Again, if I come over to output here, you'll see that I switched to web resource linker. It's doing its work publishing this to CRM online. All right, so we've published and come back over here. And if I just want to debug this web resource, I can come over to it, open it up, grab its hyperlink. Go back to Visual Studio, change my start URL. All right. Save everything. And this time, set my breakpoint over here, which I have. Start this up in the debugger. Boom, there we go. Now I'm in this JavaScript file, which was referenced by this HTML file. And I can do all the things I can do with Visual Studio and its rich JavaScript debugging capabilities. All right, so in this walkthrough, what you've seen is how to use Visual Studio to wire up F5 debugging for CRM JavaScript web resources. And it's all enabled through the help of this Visual Studio add-on called the Web Resource Linker.